colors that they make that can be blended. So they have a whole line of colors that are pretty old colors that have been used on furniture in the past and on antiques. But then you can change the colors by mixing them thinner or then mixing them with white. So there, there are a lot of possibilities for colors um, with milk paint. Let me see what else did I underline? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Milk paint will not fade. And you can put any finish on top of it. You can sand it back. You can blend colors. You can blend layers. So it's a pretty fun way, I think, to color wood turnings. And that's about the extent of my understanding of milk paint. Yes. It's more like a stain, right? It doesn't penetrate. It's a paint and it holds to the wood. It's very tight. It makes a bond with the wood. Um, Robert, how fun do you have to sand the wood for this? Can you sand it down 600 red or can you sand it? I didn't. Here's a piece of curly maple that I just put black on today and I hardly sanded it. So you can, you know, just use the milk paint. It, the wood doesn't have to be sanded. You can use this paint on really finely sanded wood or on, it can cover up a lot of mistakes that you make. Um, you can put a lot of layers on, you can mix it thick. So there are just so many variables. Now I've, I've been in uh, demos where people were, oh, I need water. Uh, could somebody get me some water? Where people you know, would talk about how they use milk paint and there was a, a specific way. And with the research I've done, there's not a specific way. You can do it thick or thin. Uh, but the thing is, if you use this kind of milk paint, you only want to mix enough that you can use that day. It doesn't really last that long. Um, there's my syringe because I always, I always pour in more water than I want. So um, what I'm going to do is just mix a little bit of this blue paint and I used a piece of curly maple. I sanded it a little bit. I put some black paint on it, but I also, oh good, I have a sandpaper in there. I also had carved a little bit in this. So some of these things that you've seen here have been carved and then sanded back, but I'm just not gonna work on that. Anyhow, so this is the way it all looks. I use popsicle sticks repetitively. I just clean them off. Oh, I need a paper towel too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I need people like you in my shop too. <laughs> and also to find what I just stopped looking at. Um, so I'll just put that much, just a little couple of. Um, Scoops of this. You the, the range for your water, but you don't weigh your I don't. I'm just going to mix it because you can mix it thin or thick, but they say a creamy type of texture is a nice texture to have. But if you want it to be more of a wash, you can do it thinner. And if you want it to be a little thicker, you can do it thicker. I can titrate it a lot better because if I don't, and if I use this to pour it in, right, I okay. then I have to put a lot more paint in that I'm wasting because I'm such a cheap person and I don't want to waste anything. So I'll put in that much water and I'll use my used um, stick and just stir it. And you stir it for two or three minutes and get all of the um, lumps out of it. And then you let it sit for three or four minutes. And it's supposed to have some sort of a chemical reaction that sort of blends the water with all the milk and stuff. So you let it sit. All right. I'll sort of put it together so it's in a little puddle together and I'll let that sit and while that's sitting I'll just talk about 
So the forms of bowls that you saw that I had used color on, I had turned this form out of what I think is a young mulberry tree that a friend gave to me. He was um, cutting down this tree and I um, turned it and I love the wood so much that I figured I would just use pyrography and accentuate the one of the axes that I I turned good, you can see it. <laughs> and so I brought in two of these because I just finished them. These are some of the things that have been sitting in my shop for a year. And I thought, well, I just need to finish them. Here's another one of those um, mulberry pieces that I just think the wood is so beautiful and use pyrography to accentuate the one axis that I turned off. So now, this is sat for a minute and it's thick. It's like um, heavy cream. And like I said, if you want a thinner uh, paint, you can use a thinner paint. You can put more water in. And you can use um, any kind of brush. You can use foam brushes. I've seen a lot of people use a foam brush. I said I'm cheap. I want to wash the brush and use it again. So I want something I can use again and again. So I'm going to use this brush. And then just paint it on top. And you don't have to blend colors and paint it on top of another color. And this is a little thick. Maybe I can thin it out just a little more. And it dries pretty quickly, but not quickly enough to do much with it right now. So you can blend yellows and reds and whatever, and you create layers and you can either carve through them or um, brought some carving tools here or sand through them to make the effect of uh, something like that. And I'm not sure I like that. I might you know, play with that a little more, put another color, maybe yellow, and just, just play and see what happens. So that's about all I know about milk paints. I think they're a lot of fun to use and... Um, good in coffee. Good in coffee, yes, no. <laughs> just an hour or two. Yeah, not very long at all. Well, you close and close. Uh, yeah, probably, probably does. Yeah, I was my hands were black today. I saw some friends and they said, "Did you get bruise, <coughs> bruises on your hand?" I said, "No, I was playing with black milk paint." So, yeah. Can you blend the color very well? Well, you know that brochure does say that you can use white and lighten it up, and I'm sure if you do that and if you know about paint color, you can blend them. I'm no expert on that, so. But I, I know that the sky's the limit. I mean, it, they're, oh, and so finishing it, um, see, it's already drying now. It's turning a, a lighter color of blue. And I did some um, bandsaw boxes, and I wanted to use this and texturing on it. <clears throat> but I didn't know how to finish it. So Michael Cullen, do you all know who he is? He's, he th writes a lot of articles for fine woodworking, and he's a... He's made some bandsaw boxes and he's made some really good videos and he uses milk paint quite a bit. He's a very precise person, sands it down, puts the milk paint on, sands that down with like 400 grit and then maybe puts another layer. And uh, I didn't know if I could use an oil finish or a lacquer finish. When you use an oil finish, it, make, it turns the color of the milk paint a little darker. If you spray it with lacquer, I think it keeps it pretty open or you don't even have to finish it at all. So I think what he does is sprays it with uh, lacquer, but everybody's different. Is there a type of uh, treatment like to, you have to prep work before you do the, can you just like uh, put the lacquer straight on or do you have to do kind of prep work to get that loose? Well, what he does is sands it down a little bit. He sort of burnishes it. He doesn't use sandpaper, he uses, um, no, um, the metal stuff. Steel wool. Thank you. Steel wool. Yeah, really. Four-op steel wool. 
but I'm sure whatever you use is going to be okay. So no paint stands really well, right? Does it not paper to that? Say that. No paint sands well, right? It doesn't. It does. Like yeah, and so if I wanted to sand, this is a little old. Well, let's sand this one here. Um, then let's see what happens. You can go through the blue and get to the black. It's sort of hard to see how much I'm removing, but yeah, it sands really well. So. Because it's a uh, water base, we will raise the grain on you. The first, if you sand it really to a thousand grit and then put no paint on it, you sort of like climb back over that. So, I think I've told you everything that I do know. I will clear out my little demo here. I'll take these to the sink. Put that you know, that's what you said about the finish. My rule of thumb is the oil base generally yellow, water base generally is somewhat transparent in color. I've used oil base on it and it darkens right. it. And I can't tell if it's yellow, but it does darken it up so that it looks like it's wet again instead of when it dries, it gets that lighter color. Yeah, but there's a, a lot of room just for experimentation and play. Where do you get your pigments? Your, your Here. Oh, really? Yeah. Have I? No, I haven't. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what that does. White, water, water, water-based poly. Is that what you're talking about? A oh, wipe on poly. Yeah, yeah. And that's oil based. That's the same thing. Yeah. You really just water it down. I mean, it's yeah. diluted, diluted. Uh, yeah. Water -based, if you use a water based coffee rub, does it dissolve in the water? No, it's pretty stable once you have it on the wood and it dries. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, a water based poly. Yeah. I would think so. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. is Yeah, I use wind waxes. Uh, but if you go online, there's so much information about this, and you can see somebody ha have a, a whole piece of wood, and they'll color it with different color with this, you know, different segments, and then they'll finish it different ways, just to experiment and see what is it that you want, what works for you. But as far as I could tell, there's no right or wrong or a disaster you can do. It's just a personal preference about how you want to finish it and the kind of effect you want. And I like that a lot that, you know, there's so many options that you can do it.